Big story coming in from the United States. Impeachment probe into Joe Biden gets a go-ahead from U.S. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, who's directed uh, GOP-led committees to now open Biden's impeachment inquiry. House Speaker said that trusted FBI informant has alleged a bribe to the Biden family. This, of course, is to do with his son Hunter Biden's dealings. Kevin McCarthy has also directed Republican-led committees to now open an impeachment inquiry into President Joe Biden. McCarthy has claimed that Biden had lied to the American people about his knowledge of his family's own foreign business dealings. The White House has, in the meanwhile, slammed the probe as extreme politics at its worst. The Republican-led House Oversight Committee has launched an investigation in January into allegations that Biden profited from his son Hunter Biden's business dealings while he was vice president. Let's also listen in to what House Speaker Kevin McCarthy has to say. You know, in the months that we were gone, in the weeks, House Republicans have uncovered serious and credible allegations into President Biden's conduct. Taken together, these allegations paint a picture of a culture of corruption. Now, here's what we know so far. Through our investigations, we have found that President Biden did lie to the American people about his own knowledge of his family's foreign business dealings. Eyewitnesses have testified that the President joined on multiple phone calls and had multiple interactions, dinners, resulted in cars and millions of dollars into his son's and his son's business partners. We know that bank records show that nearly $20 million in payments were directed to the Biden family members and associates through various shale companies. The Treasury Department alone has more than 150 transactions involving the Biden family and other business associates that were flagged as suspicious activity by U.S. banks. Even a trusted FBI informant has alleged a bribe to the Biden family. Biden used his official office to coordinate with Hunter Biden's business partners about Hunter's role in Burisma, a Ukrainian energy company. Finally, Despite these serious allegations, it appears that the President's family has been offered special treatment by Biden's own administration. Treatment that not otherwise would have received if they were not related to the President. These are allegations of abuse of power, obstruction, and corruption. And they warrant further investigation by the House of Representatives. That's why today, I am directing our House committee to open a formal impeachment inquiry into President Joe Biden. This logical next step will give our committees the full power to gather all the facts and answers for the American public. That's exactly what we want to know, the answers. I believe the President would want to answer these questions and allegations as well. This effort will be led by Chairman James Comer, at the Committee on Oversight, in coordination with Chairman Jim Jordan for Judiciary Committee, and Chairman Jason Smith on Ways and Means. Now, I do not make this decision lightly. And regardless of your party or who you voted for, these facts should concern all Americans. The American people deserve to know that the public offices are not for sale and that the federal government is not being used to cover up the actions of a politically associated family. Now, I would encourage the President and his team to fully cooperate with this investigation in the interests of transparency. We are committed to getting the answers for the American public. Nothing more, nothing less. We will go wherever the evidence takes us. 
All right, CNN News 18. Sanjay Suri uh, joins me live on the newscast, and I'll go quickly to Sanjay first before I also bring in my second guest tonight is Nicole Brenner Schmitz, who's also a Democrat strategist. She'll be joining me in just a bit. But Sanjay, uh, first and foremost, what happens now, even though calling for an inquiry is the first initial step, but take our viewers through what involves this inquiry. Well, this is an inquiry that clearly is political. We have uh, been seeing signs of this coming. And uh, there has been an overlap that ought to be uncomfortably perceived, uh, perceived as uncomfortable rather, uh, between what McCarthy calls allegations and what he calls facts. Uh, he has used those two uh, quite interchangeably. At the moment, uh, we have a number of allegations that McCarthy has presented. He says an inquiry into this has been ordered, but uh, we are very uh, uh, a long way yet from uh, determining whether uh, these allegations are in fact true. This is only the start of the inquiry process. Mm. If there was to be an inquiry that then finds uh, something credible that can be substantiated, then uh, the procedural next step would be for this to be presented to the House of Representatives for a vote, which can then uh, vote for impeachment by a simple majority, after which it will go to the uh, Senate, if it were to do so, as the Senate will have to uh, approve it by a two-thirds majority. It is only then that you could actually consider any impeachment, and we are a long way short of that. Uh, the Senate, for a start, uh, has uh, um, uh, an almost equal number of uh, a Democrats and Republicans, and if you count the leanings of the Democrats, it's a little uh, right. Democrat heavy by uh, one vote. Right. So um, it will need a very, very credible finding for then the Senate to accept it, if the House accepts it to begin with. Right. Sanjay, also, how do you assess the timing, considering House GOP's government shutdown threat is now colliding with Biden's impeachment inquiry by McCarthy? And in fact, I can also see Nicole has joined in. Nicole, I'll be coming to you in just a bit. But Sanjay, I'll let you take that question first. Well, this clearly is a, a politically timed event. We've seen the allegations uh, being made against uh, uh, Trump, followed by charges being filed, a trial date set, and the Republicans have been very much on the defensive and in their uh, defense of Trump. They've been sort of tripping over one another to try and uh, find a fine line between acknowledging seriousness and uh, suggesting that, uh, well, this is all a political witch hunt. Uh, this has been something that has had the Republicans on the back foot. Now we know that there are serious concerns about Hunter Biden. There have been a number of very serious allegations. The question then is whether these then transfer as easily to President Biden himself as McCarthy has been suggesting, and we have not seen evidence of that yet. All right. Many thanks to you, Sanjay, for bringing in all those latest inputs. And with that, let me quickly uh, go across to Nicole, who is now with us on the newscast. Nicole, uh, talking about the whole shutdown threat, what will be the challenges now faced by Kevin McCarthy next month when he wants to get that bill passed? Yeah, well, I mean, he's doing this solely to appease a very right wing aspect of his caucus. He is even hosting a private briefing for a single member, Congressman Ken Buck, who insisted upon this to move forward. But they haven't promised that they're going to vote for this deal yet. And he's going to have to deal with a chunk of members in his caucus that represent districts that voted for Joe Biden. There are nine of those. And so this is not good politics for them in their district. So he has a real balancing act here. And he's decided to just light a political fire and use a lot of falsehoods. I mean, even the things he just talked about where we saw when he talks about that FBI tip, that's been dealt with. Senator Grassley and Congressman Comer published an unredacted version of that memo. It turned up nothing. Uh, you know, we've seen the bank records. Comer even went on right wing news, Newsmax, and said, oh, it didn't have exactly what we thought it was. Fox News has called out document after document that's been produced and said, this is Republican suggestions, mm -hmm. but there's nothing there. So he's listing off what they're going to investigate. It's a whole bunch of stuff they've investigated and found nothing on.
It's interesting you mentioned uh, the House Freedom Caucus and their demands. Take me through some of their demands before I delve deeper into what is the kind of pressure that's being faced by McCarthy. I mean, they want to see uh, an impeachment into Biden. They want to do anything they can to tear down this White House and this administration. And they basically want to run a Trump campaign from the House. I mean, what they're doing is taking a Donald Trump talking points, Donald Trump presidential election, and running it from the floor of the House of Representatives. And that's what makes me want to ask you, what does that speak of the kind of support for Donald Trump within the GOP, not to forget the kind of pressure that Kevin McCarthy is facing now? Yeah, I mean, look, there's no doubt that Donald Trump has a significant support within the Republican base. Uh, there are, I think, a, a host of members in the more moderate wing who continue to be frustrated by that, um, but they haven't been able to coalesce around a different leader for their party. So right now, Donald Trump's still ruling the roost there, and he really does control a lot of the action. And I mean, Kevin McCarthy made it clear after we watched 15 rounds of votes for him to achieve being speaker that and taking calls from Trump and cutting deals with the Freedom Caucus, that he'll do whatever Trump tells him to do. He's going to go ahead and be his puppet so that he can hold on to that speakership. He only has the majority in the House by five seats. That's a slim majority, no matter uh, you know what your dynamics of your caucus are. And he has some very, very extreme right-wing people. We had right, Congress and, and that's that why game. I was wondering because just a month ago, I read about Kevin McCarthy's comments on that conservative website, Breitbart. He said that he wouldn't open an impeachment inquiry without a vote of the full House. What are the factors that have led to this reversal of a decision? It's a flip-flop, and we can only imagine what's being said behind the closed doors. We know out in public that Florida Congressman Matt Gates, who's a real leader in the Freedom Caucus, call, floated uh, an idea of calling for a new vote for McCarthy to be Speaker. I think that's the threat he's under. It's just losing his own hold on the power over the caucus. And so he's doing whatever he needs, and he seems to do it with a... 10 foot view. It's not a long term view. It's just solve the problem of this week to keep in power. Next week, solve that problem. So he's completely flip flopped on what he said about impeachment. And now they're moving forward with inquiries, apparently into a whole bunch of things we've already investigated. All right. We'll have to see how this inquiry, in fact, pans out and uh, what kind of impact does it manage to have uh, in 2024, if at all it does.